Hello everyone, welcome to a Foreign Farming in the Philippines. Well, Tata and I have been going back and forth for a couple weeks now with ideas on how to stop the leaks in this dam. Uh, we've gone from uh, just adding more dirt to putting a, a tarp along the right hand edge all the way down to the to the bottom of the pond we've uh, thought about using that metal roofing and we've kind of we had kind of settled on well here, here's the, the thing I thought I had wanted to use the metal roofing and uh, put it on the right hand side of this bank and uh, use that as a barrier and I just don't I was just not of the opinion that uh, that would give us any more of a barrier than what we've already got and then I'd kind of and using the metal sheets from the the old round tank to do that and last night, you know, Tatai and Gina's roof leaks in a heavy rain. And so, rather than just, in my opinion, just wasting those roofing sheets on this dam, last night I'd said, Tatai, let's just put a tarp on it. Let's just, let's just use a tarp the same way that you wanted to use the metal roofing and just put a tarp all the way down on this right-hand side, uh, cover it, cover the bottom of it with mud, and so that the bottom of it is sealed and then just just overlap it and lay it over the top of the dam similar to what we've got with this overflow here but with the tarp going all the way to the bottom and seal it that way and then this morning uh, Tatai he's got a, a modified plan uh, they, they've uh, straightened this out and dug this out here. We have a lot of old scrap bamboo left over from the, the Azola pits when all those were taken out. And so he wants to build a like a retainer wall. That's what these posts are in the ground for. And put a tarp on it uh, on this on the left hand side and then backfill that with mud. And he thinks it's important that we use mud, the wet mud, and not uh, the, the uh, not just the damp soil, and and do it that way. And we'll still we'll we'll save those sheets to repair those metal sheets to repair their roof. And so I'm going to hop in there and relieve somebody from the shovel work. So that they can go get uh, the bamboo poles and uh, we'll get cracking on this. All right. Tata's putting in the bottom piece of bamboo. We've shoveled this out pretty much flush all the way along here, all the way back to this corner here. Have dug it down uh, to the water level so that we have access to mud. And I shoveled up, I don't know, five, ten gallons of water onto that pile that we removed on that far end. I just dug this out here so you can't really you can't really tell but like in that little spot right there you can see that fresh water and if I go along there you can see water seeping through everywhere I mean this is a lot of leaks and I guess Tata is correct even though we were tamping this down half-assed as we went we were using dry soil when we should have been using mud. So I think that was the, that was the main problem. 
Tata thinks that's the main problem why this was leaking, and I tend to agree. So now we're going to solve that. It's going to be it's going to be hard work shoveling this mud back into this gap here because mud is hard, just it's just hard shoveling. You're fighting the suction to get your shovel out. It's heavy, but there's four of us. Uh, I'm going to go up and get uh, my foreigner shovel here directly. I just I just stole this one. This is the one top that I was using. But I wanted Tatai to stop using a shovel and go and get the bamboo ready. Watch those nails, Tatai. I don't want I don't want anyone stepping on them. Especially me. Ren, Duha. Ren, Duha. You know, amazing enough, since we've since we've dug this out, I don't see a lot of fresh water coming in. Yeah. Why is that, Tatai? I mean, we we dig out a portion of the bank and it stops leaking. How is that possible? Because this one, before we put the soil, it's dry. Uh, but it was leaking this morning, and now it's not leaking. And we removed soil. Well, I'm just—it's just a—I just find that uh, curious. Uh, no, the water is like that. Maybe the leaking is uh, small, but the oh, when the level gets higher, it'll leak. Higher. I got you. you have leaking. Yeah. Well, I got you, Tata. Well, the pump is running, so uh, there should be some water coming in soon. Because the the depth of this first pond does need to be about six to eight inches deeper. In fact, it needs to be. Maybe the water is. Yeah, it needs to be to where, when this pond is finished and in operation, the water from this pond needs to just drain into it over the top. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're going to have to. Uh, build a another spillway. I think just what we were doing there is fine. Maybe two. Maybe two? Yeah. You know, I was thinking, Tatai. Maybe one meter wide. Yeah. You know what I was thinking? Like up there in the road, right there at the corner of this pond. Uh, you know, when we have when we have big rain, of course the water is going to come out of that four-inch pipe, and it's going to come in here. But we, when we have big rain, the water also goes out of the spillway of the main pond, yeah? yeah? And just comes down this road. And it crosses right down there where uh, we built that spillway, and then it'll eventually drain through the last pond. Yeah. What I was thinking, Tatai, is if we could build a, I don't know, maybe a small dam right there at that corner, so that when the water comes out of the spillway, it comes into this pond and drains through the ponds instead of just going through the road. Why not? Because all I'm thinking, here's why, here's why I want to do that, Tatai, because water quality is going always going to be an issue in these ponds. And if we can get fresh water in, in them in a large volume, 
So he, the water has to be exchanged. Fresh water in, old water out. Right now, the only way we have to do that is with that electric pump, a small amount. And what I'm thinking is later, when, when we have heavy rain, it'll come in, if we could, because there's a lot of water that comes through this road, just, just goes down and, and, and is wasted. And if we could divert even a portion, not all, just a portion, yeah. we just like, like another, like we build a small dam there and then just put another, an additional, one additional four inch pipe. Oh, okay. So we have one four inch pipe and one four inch pipe. So we capture some of the water at least and, and exchange it through these ponds. What do you think? Because I know, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking if we divert all the water into here, it will, it will flood over, it will overwhelm the spillway, and we'll lose everything. I, I, I know why, you're, why you don't want to do it, but maybe just one, one additional four inch pipe. What do you think? Or even 1.5 meter both sides. Because what's going to happen, Tatai? Look, we, we, we need to remove most of this Azola because it's, it's not doing well. But what will happen in a heavy rain, if there's duckweed in here, if there's Azola in here, Kang Kong, whatever. Whatever's in here is going to, because we have to have a net, right? Is going to plug the net. So we need larger spillway rather than smaller. And meaning that if the net gets too plugged up, then the spillway's plugged up and the water won't drain. Alright, well this bamboo, some of it's kind of rotten. And this last piece we put in, it's, it's bowed and so uh, there's a force against the nails after it's nailed to the posts and it keeps busting out. We got we got uh, some in back there, but in this middle portion, it uh, it's just not it's just not holding. So Tata is getting some uh, nylon. Uh, All right, I got this rain, y'all. Go get some more bamboo. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but I'll, I'll put the camera a little bit closer. Kind of sounds like maybe like Rice Krispies in a bowl, or like the crackling of a fire. And that is the sound of the fish eating the Azola. Maybe this one is enough higher. You think that's enough, Tatai? Okay. You can see those bubbles out there. You can see. Those bubbles are left behind from them eating it. So they are eating it even though it's brown. <coughs> Lunch time, Tate? Yeah. Right, lunch break is over. The water is 
coming in again. I don't know if you guys remember from long ago when I was trying to make that elevated fountain in the original pond. And I had a I had a a pipe up in the air at an elbow right right at the edge of the pond there. And it would work after a fashion while while it was working, but you had to start it every time. You had to undo the elbow or else it, the water wouldn't drain from the tank, even though that's about a, oh, I don't know, a 20-foot height elevation difference. Uh, it would never start on its own. And the same thing is happening now, right at the elbow, where I've got the water running over to this. Unless you remove the elbow and the water begins to flow, and then you replace the elbow and the water and the water flows just like it's flowing now but unless you do that it won't start it's a mystery I think it's just because there's air in the line but every time uh, we're having to uh, start it we need to put a I don't know some kind of restriction on the end here so that it it stays full of water somehow. We got to do something different because I don't want to. Because I have to crawl down into the pond, remove the elbow, let the water flow, and then replace it for the water to drain into the pond here. We talked about digging it up and and because it's a it's like a little dip. I should probably go up there and, and do this part of the video, but yeah, I'll show you guys later. But I've got a. I want to show you just what Top Dye was saying a little while ago when I was saying it, it doesn't look like it was that it's leaking since we dug the mud out and then Top Dye says well you know when the water level goes up it's going to leak and here's a prime example of that because the water's flowing in from somewhere on that other side it's coming out here and that's a perfectly round little hole there and so that's been made by a frog or something that is burrowed through there so anyway we're going to endeavor to to fix that we should probably what do you think Tata should we dig that out yeah just dig it out and then replace it yeah because this area right here is the worst, is where it leaks the worst. So perhaps we will. Because that's a substantial leak there. What are you doing, Red? I can't hear you, Red. What? You ate my ice cream? Why did you do that, Red? Oh, it was, it was yummy. What if I just pinch your little head off, Red? Why did you eat my ice cream, huh? I liked it. You liked it, that's why? <laughs> well, thanks, Red. Gina uh, got a bunch of little twin pops at the store yesterday. And, uh, because we got, I got one Charlie, I got Charlie one like three or four days ago. And amazingly enough, he ate it. And he, you know, he held it by the stick and he ate it. And it didn't end up all over him. Uh, I was pretty amazed, and so uh, I ate half of it and going, you know what, <laughs> That's, I forgot how much I like Twin Pops. Twin Pops are just a popsicle, you know. And uh, so Gina brought home, I don't know, a half a dozen or so yesterday. 
and I had one. And uh, looks like Red's been eating them now. So are there any are there any popsicles left, Red? No. No, you ate the last one. Yeah. Don't you feel guilty about that, Red? Yeah. Yeah. But I guess not guilty enough to not to not eat it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever fed the fish before, Gina? Yeah. No? Did you ever play baseball when you were a little girl? Softball. So let's let's see how your arm is. Did you have a good arm? Yeah. Watch out, Red. Red! Watch out, buddy. Mama. Alright, get a good scoop and throw it out there as far as you can. Come on, this is a test. Oh, that's perfect. Come on, dog. You're going to end up swimming, Red. Motion down, yeah. yeah. Uh oh, that was a moon shot there. I have no idea why the Azola died. My guess is that it's getting too much sun. It's either too much sun or too much nitrogen in the water. Other than that, who knows? I've never been able to figure this Azola out. Well, that's pretty good, Red. Come on, Red, show us your style. That's pretty good, Red. You're throwing it just as far as your mom. So which hand are you going to use? The left or the right? Both. Good job, Red Red. Alright, well we've gotten a piece of tarp. It's not quite long enough. Why? Because this is out of one of the pits. We did widen this a bit. It is, it is, the ponds now are wider, wider this way than the pits were. How much, how much short, Tatai? Three meters? Two meters. Yeah. I think on a video long ago I had said I wanted it about a meter wider on each side and that's what we ended up with so it's not gonna one tarp isn't gonna do it we'll have to but we'll have to make them end to end
Is Ringel trying to find some nails? Do we have any? Well, I guess we don't need bamboo on the top, huh? You want to just try to disconnect this stuff, eh? No? We have a black pulley. A small black pulley. Okay. We really only need to hold it in place until we get the mud there, and then it doesn't matter. Alright, well that wasn't hard at all, and this is going along very well. I I used my corner feet and weight and I just stepped I just stepped on that tarp and basically uh, did my best to pack it in against the uh, bamboo and it's already holding back water and uh, I think this is going to work well once we get you know, the rest of the mud in it. I think we've solved the, the leaking problem. Well, I didn't think it was possible, but made Tatai cry break before I did. Rainyal and I were filling up those buckets. We shoveled close to there where uh, Ronmar is until we basically got all there was handy. And then we started filling up those tubs. So two guys shoveling them full and two guys taking them over and dumping them in. Any way you do it, that's back breaking work. Yeah, those those two young fellows are still at it, but they're not pushing 60 like me and Tata are. <laughs> we needed a break. Well, we've run into a A slight snag. We were filling it a little bit too full, I think, because we're using really sloppy mud, and it's, it's bowing out the stakes. And <coughs> and it's coming out. Through the bottom <coughs> just a little bit so what we decided to do is just not fill it quite so full today or so high and then come back tomorrow and uh, make a make a dome let it uh, partially uh, dry a bit. That's the plan anyway. These stakes are almost two feet in the ground. It's just a lot of weight because we're using wet mud. I'm going to sit down and smoke a cigarette. <laughs> he wants to help the day. Charlie wants to help. So he wants this wall again? Yeah. Daddy
It's like you don't have power anymore. What's wrong? <laughs> si Brian, bagamay na kayong pinalahan. <laughs> Your pala is very... <laughs> Gamay naman kayong pinalasahan ko sa pala. Hindi na <laughs> Poor big thing. Lantawa da dong, Rinyel. I think it's only four. Nah, Dade. It's it's lunch time. Lunch time? Yeah. Sounds good to me. <laughs> What time is it right now? 5.04. 5.04, really? Yeah. Well, thank God. <laughs> so right. You can rest now, Daddy. Oh, my God. You're still standing. Look at you. I kept up with the Filipinos all day. <laughs> they're still... They're still... I didn't die. <laughs> Look at Daddy. He's playing in the water. You want to go there? Huh? When we are, when we come here, he knows we are going to see the fish. And he said, "Te, te, 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 te." Maybe tomorrow is done. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow's done. Oh yeah. Te, te. Well, what are we gonna do about the blisters we all got today, Pepe? No. I been. <laughs> no, no, Pipi. Oh, no. All righty. What are you? Are you still catching fish? Wow. Yeah, there's a couple fish over in this side. As you can see we cleared this area right here. And so we'll probably clear even more of that tomorrow. All that in there. And yeah, maybe we might get done tomorrow. Maybe. And then it's back to the playpen. Well, alrighty then. Thank you, everyone. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. <laughs>